can demonstrate Einstein's photoelectric effect with a few commonplace lab materials and an electroscope. Get some negative charge, for example with a rubber rod and animal fur, or with a balloon, and place it on top of the electroscope. It should deflect easily and discharge easily. This is one of the best electroscopes I've seen. At the end of the video, I include a few electroscope tips. Take a shortwave ultraviolet lamp and it discharges. Charge it up again and this time add a pane of glass. nothing happens. When the glass is removed, it discharges again. Some types of ultraviolet light are blocked by glass. On top of the electroscope, I've placed a zinc plate, which I scrub with steel wool to get rid of the oxide layer. The zinc helps it be more sensitive to ultraviolet light. Now you might wonder, can I charge it instead with positive charge instead of negative charge? For example, by using a piece of glass rubbed with silk, or the fun fly stick. We now repeat the experiment with positive charge in place. It doesn't work. The photoelectric effect is only for electrons. It will not work on positive charges. The electrons are light and mobile at the surface of the metal but the positive charges are deep in the nucleus and it takes a lot of energy to get them out. This is one way to tell the difference between positive and negative charge. Now, you might say, why do I have to use UV light? Can't I just use regular colors of light to get the photoelectric effect? Well, let's try it. Red, green, and blue. Even the long wave black light, ultraviolet, doesn't work. It has to be UVC, and that's what this special lamp is for. The thing with light is, the shorter the wavelength, the more energy it has. And this was already well known, but what was worth the Nobel Prize is that the light hits one electron at a time, not coming in as waves, but as individual pieces of light, one particle of light hitting one electron at a time. Einstein called this particle a quantum of light, meaning that it is a discrete exchange of energy. We now call it a photon. It's also possible to demonstrate the photoelectric effect with a small neon bulb. These will turn on at about 70 volts. Once you find its turn-on voltage, dial it back to where it's just about to turn on. And then shine a blue light on it. This will not work with red or green lights. It must be either blue or ultraviolet. Now, if you're having trouble with your electroscope, here are a few tips. Be sure the insulator is separate from the frame. If it's not positioned correctly and the charging leaf is in contact with the frame, you will not be able to charge the electroscope. The best technique for charging is to charge up the material you are using and then wipe the charge onto the electroscope's plate. This is because the charge is stuck on the insulator and can't move around. It's usually easier to charge the electroscope negatively than it is to charge it positively. Rabbit fur on any form of plastic or latex can provide negative charge. Plastic cling wrap and a wood meter stick or a fun fly stick gives a good positive charge. Make sure you're using your electroscope in dry conditions. Humidity is bad for electrostatics. Turning on the air conditioner can help. 
A working electroscope will respond to a charged object based on its proximity. If your scope is not sensitive enough, you can bend the lower leaf slightly. If your scope is too sensitive, bend the upper leaf slightly. I hope you found this video insightful. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. A new video will be posted every month. So if you enjoyed watching this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button right here and check out some of our other cool videos. If you enjoyed watching this one, give us a thumbs up. For more information on products used in this video, click this link right here.